So, I've talked about warheads before, today I'm going to talk about missile guidance systems. As I've said before, I am no engineer, I am no physicist, I am no mathematician. Guidance systems are incredibly technologically complex, but in regard to explanation, we can categorize them fairly simply. So I'm going to go over it today in a pretty simple manner. The missile guidance system for the layman, really. Now, the guidance of a missile entirely depends upon its range. Longer range systems specifically need different guidance systems to facilitate that longer course. Uh, really, this is because they can't yet see the target. It depends upon uh, line of sight, but they need to orientate themselves, and they can either orientate themselves by where they start and where they have been, or they can orientate themselves in regard to the target or their launch vehicle. Now, a lot of these systems are similar to what a drone, a plane, a car might use, uh, because it's orientating itself based upon external factors and other stuff telling it where it is, or it knowing where it is. Um, but we'll start off with what's simpler, and we'll work backwards. Uh, we'll start off with the final stage of missile guidance, and this is what we call the terminal phase. Now, the terminal phase is, technically speaking, the last point at which a missile can be intercepted prior to strike, but for simplicity's sake, the terminal phase, we'll say, is the phase during which a missile can use a sensor system to see the target. Now, these systems, given that they are involved with uh, the target, are GOT systems, nearly de facto. Uh, that is to say, they go on to target systems. Now, what this means is that the guidance system utilizes targeting seekers um, to hit something specific. That is to say, they can see the target and they go towards the target. Uh, they may have external influence helping them, but their target is a specific object. This is contrasted with GOLIS systems, which are go on to location in space, where the missile itself is trying to go to a specific location based upon where everything else is telling it where it is, where it knows it is, rather than actually trying to hit an identifiable object. Now, the most common GOT system for model, modern tactical missiles is uh, either radar-seeking or laser-seeking. Now, these may sound incredibly different, but they work on the same basic principle. They're both kinds of homing guidance systems. So the missile itself goes actively sometimes towards the target specifically. Uh, and this is sort of a, in contrast with remote control systems, where something external controls the missile and where it goes rather than the missile itself. Uh, within these systems, you may have other stuff feeding into the information that the missile has, but it is the one propelling itself, making alterations in direction and maneuvering to get where it needs to go rather than being told that by an external uh, influencing platform. Now, these radar and laser systems are really quite broad categories, uh, but they basically fall into two main categories, which is active and semi-active. And this can either be applied to radar or laser terminal guidance. It's the same principle. We often hear uh, laser-guided bomb uh, or, you know, semi-active laser-guided missile. It sounds incredibly complicated, but fundamentally it is pretty... Perhaps not simple, but uh, it's easy to understand. Uh, and they're both types of homing systems. So for active guidance, either for laser or for radar, it's where the missile has a transmitter and a receiver. So it projects, it shoots out a radar or a laser beam outwards towards its target, uh, where it has a track, and then receives that radar or laser beam by the receiver, it gets reflected back. So to oversimplify a little, the guidance system then just has to keep this uh, radar or laser beam reflection aligned in order to successfully guide the missile onto target. Now, this is used in uh, the Meteor air-to-air -air missile by MBDA, the Harpoon anti-ship missile, Hellfire, uh, anti-armor, the Aster, the CAMM, which is uh, what Sea Scepter is based off, uh, they use this system because it's it's pretty useful. It's got a high resistance to countermeasures, and it's simply because really the transmitter is closer, and it can distinguish more easily and maintain lock more easily. Uh, it gives the ability to fire and forget because everything that is needed to actually hit the target is housed in the missile itself once you've given it direction. So once the munition is away from the launch platform, it's free to continue to do whatever it likes well, not whatever it likes, but whatever it needs to do. 
In short, it's pretty much entirely autonomous on the missile itself, perhaps with information feeding in, but it's likely to successfully strike. In short, active is where you have a transmitter and receiver in the missile itself, projecting and then receiving uh, a laser or radar signal, and then it can go towards where it gets locked from that. Unfortunately though, not so much anymore, if the missile is more short range and utilizes solid fuel propellant or even liquid fuel propellant, anything that isn't turbofan, so non-cruise missiles basically, they have to use batteries uh, for this type of setup because obviously you need energy to actually use uh, radar transmitters or laser transmitters and receivers. Uh, so it does have its disadvantages given that it's not really, it isn't a perma component, but Every missile has to have a different radar unit as well, um, which is destroyed in the uh, destruction or the successful strike of a missile. So the other one, it can just sort of correspond with platform radar illuminator. But the issue is, as much as this is accurate, it can be expensive. And it means that you've got extra weight in the form of a battery. So active radar or laser um, homing is positive, but it has its drawbacks too. Now, active homing systems are fairly often employed. As we've said, they're more accurate. It means you can't confuse deter the missile, uh, but they do have their downsides. And so really for homing, the only other option other than passive homing, which we'll talk about in a bit, is semi-active uh, radar or laser homing, which works in pretty much exactly the same way, except for one thing. The transmitter is projected from, generally, the launch vehicle, but an external source. That is to say, this time, instead of sending out a signal and receiving the uh, reflection and then being able to go towards that, something else, probably plane um, or shoulder-mounted uh, launch system, will fire some sort of transmission towards the target and then that will bounce off the target towards the uh, receiver that is in the missile. Now, when the launcher does this, when it projects uh, either a laser or radar, it's called target illumination. Now, the vehicle illuminates the target. It paints it uh, with basically a laser or radar point, and then from the reflection, the missile can go towards that. And that gives the missile a point towards which it's meant to go. So that's fairly simple, I guess. Next is something that's sort of included. We've had active, we've had se uh, semi-active homing. This next one is passive homing. Now, passive homing systems utilize, it's, it's not quite the same, but it utilizes some sort of signature emitted from the target. And they lock onto this and direct themselves towards it. So rather than firing something out and receiving it back, rather than uh, something else firing something out to illuminate the target and it receiving it back, it just receives certain signatures from the target. So, best way to explain this is with an example. An example of this would be infrared homing. That's, you know, more colloquially known as heat seeking. It just sees the heat um, and can detect the heat rays coming off the back of, let's say, a jet. Uh, and from this, it isn't sending a signal, it's not... Uh, receiving a signal from elsewhere, it is just getting the signal from the target itself. Uh, so this is used in Javelin, uh, as well as stuff like, I guess you could say for uh, passive homing, not only infrared homing, but TV contrast homing, which utilizes sort of X and Y axis black and white footage to direct the target towards where it needs to be. You've got sort of the highest point of differential grain. Basically, it takes either light or heat signatures most commonly, and then determines where the highest difference is and then goes towards that. So it's not quite similar to the others, but uh, it has some benefits. A huge benefit to this is that it facilitates, again, fire and forget mechanisms. Uh, and considering that there's no reliance really on a launch platform to stay around in order to maintain a constant lock, it means the hit missile is inherently self-guided. Additionally, you don't actually have to have any sort of transmitter sending out lasers, um, or radar waves, which makes it significantly lighter, um, and it means you don't need these heavy batteries. But again, the downside of this is that it might not necessarily be as accurate because you are going off an external uh, stimulus. It means that you're not able to control the power 
I guess, of the lock because you're not able to control the power of the signal of the thing that it's basing itself on. Now, next, we're going to talk about INS. INS is something used for longer range missiles. All missiles will generally use it, but it's really key in longer range missiles. INS is inertial navigation system, and generally this utilizes gyroscopic stabilization mechanisms to measure direction. Now, what that means, generally these are electronic, it uses these electronic systems to measure where it was, um, calculate its speed, acceleration, so it will have accelerometers, the time elapsed, the angle, the position, and then from there it can determine precisely where the missile is because it knows where it was. Now this is really quite useful because it means a missile can be independent of any external tracking system. The missile doesn't need other systems to know where it is, it knows where it is. Uh, and it means it doesn't have to see the target in order to travel either. So generally, generally what's used is called a gimbal mounted gyroscope. But again, that's sort of olden days, most of them are electric now. Anyway, the missile can use three of these um, alongside three accelerometers, the former to measure change in direction, rotation, pitch, yaw, stuff like that, um, whatever it might be, uh, and then the latter to measure how much speed this thing has been gaining, and then from there it can determine where it is, considering where it was. It can cross-reference this also with where it's programmed to go, so it will have a specific set um, of where it needs to go, where it needs to be. It can calculate where it is with all of this, and calculate um, where it isn't, and from there it can determine where it needs to go, what is the correct course. And so it can basically adjust um, where it's going, the direction it's going, the pitch, the yaw, all of that, based upon where it's meant to be. So it remains on course, you don't need any uh, lock on anything, it can go where it needs to go. And this is similar to a lot of other stuff, but drones especially will particularly uh, use this because, you know, electronic um, gyroscopes can feed back pretty accurate information for what the thing is doing. So you can use it in autonomous systems as well as semi-autonomous systems. Uh, and then finally, maybe finally, I don't know, I'll see if I can think of any more. I'm assuming you know how GPS works, which is the other system generally used for longer range missiles, cruise missiles, stuff like that. Basically, signals are sent to satellites and the difference in time response allows the missile to triangulate where it is. Although sometimes, obviously, it's more complex than that in the modern day. Uh, so I think I've gone over a few today, and that should be enough. Uh, it really is more simple than it sounds. You hear a lot of complex words being thrown around, active, semi-active, homing, all of that. But it's pretty simple. So to review... Um, you have the homing systems, active, semi-active, passive. Active is the one where it sends a signal and receives it back to determine where it needs to go. Uh, semi-active is the one where it has an external source sending a signal, which will then be reflected back onto it and it can determine where it needs to go. The third, I'm not going to hold that finger up, uh, is... I'll go for that. Um, the third is passive uh, homing which is effectively where there is some sort of external source, either uh, colour or heat, and it can then determine uh, precisely where it needs to go based upon the differences in what it sees. It can go towards the concentration of highest change um, or the place where it's the hottest, something like that, uh, where there is differentials in light, that sort of thing. Uh, next, INS, which we talked about, basically uses gyroscopes and accelerometers, generally electronic nowadays, although traditionally not, uh, to determine where it was, where it should be, uh, and where it needs to go to ensure it can remain on course, often by the use of waypoints uh, of cruise missiles. And then finally, GPS satellites tell it where it is and where it needs to go and how far it's gone uh, and where the target is. So I hope that's simple enough. Uh, I think that's about as simply as I can explain it, but hopefully that's been a decent enough layman's guide to missile guidance.